In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use Roblox's new generative scripting to generate code automatically. This feature, also known as Code Assist, can be used to generate code automatically. This innovative feature has the potential to make coding more accessible to a broader audience. So let's dive in and explore its capabilities. Roblox's generative scripting, or Code Assist, is an AI-powered tool in the Roblox Studio script editor that suggests lines or functions of code as you type. The primary goal of this tool is to help experienced scripters code faster and more efficiently. However, the developers also plan to make this tool more accessible to aspiring scripters as the model improves. So first, we need to go through enabling Code Assist. To enable Code Assist in Roblox Studio, navigate to File, Beta, beta Features, and then click on AI Powered Code Completion. Then you'll need to click Save. Keep in mind that you may have to agree to a legal TOS. Then once you've done that, click on Restart. If you want to disable this feature later, you can simply uncheck this option. Okay, so Code Assist offers suggestions in two ways. Automatically, when you pause on the line for a few seconds or when the AI model gets enough context, or manually by pressing Alt and Backslash on Windows, or by on Mac using the Option and Backslash key. So let's go into an example and show you how this works. So here I am, and I'm going to make a base plate, and then let's begin with a straightforward example. So let's just go on to Subscript Service, create a script, and then we're going to say local new part, which is making a new part variable, and then saying instance.new, and then part, which is going to create a new part. Then let's say to the AI, um, let's make a, for example, this part a parent of workspace. So let's just say dash dash, and then make new part a parent of workspace. Now what we're going to do is we're going to manually trigger it. So to manually trigger it, once again, alt and backslash on Windows, on Mac, option and backslash. So let's try this. Okay, I've gone ahead and pressed it. Now let's give it a couple of seconds. Okay, and nothing seems to be happening. Now, this is because the AI doesn't have enough context on the script. Remember, AIs don't actually have much intelligence at the moment. They need more context for them to work properly. So let's do this manually. To set the parent of this part, we can just say new part dot parent equals game dot workspace. Now let's try saying dash dash make new part anchored. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this will work, but once again, we're going to try pressing alt and backslash. Oh, and there it goes. As you can see, it pops up new part dot anchored equals true. So let's click on tab. And as you can see, it automatically adds the new line. A super cool feature, right? Notice how Code Assist provided suggestions for each line of code, making the scripting process much more efficient and reducing the likelihood of errors. We can also try and change the color. So let's just say uh, new part dot color equals, and then if we leave it at this, as you can see, it automatically fills it. So we could, for example, press tab, and there we go. However, I don't want to change the size of it, so I could just remove this line. And then, as you can see, we can pick the color here, so we can just use the color selector. And then, let's make it go to orange, right? And now, if we head into Roblox Studio, it should give us this basic script. So let's click and play. Here we log in. And let's see, can we find that part? Okay, I don't know whether it's... Okay, so here's the part, but where is it? Okay, so it's hiding. Oh, and there it is. And it did spawn in the part and it did change the size, and it did set the color, so that's super convenient. Let's say for example, we wanted it to do something else. Um, on loop, change the color from orange to yellow forever. Okay, now let's give it a couple of seconds. Um, there we go. While true do, new part of color equals this. And then wait till new part of color works. Okay, so let's press tab. But as you're gonna notice, we don't actually need line four. So the thing with generative AI is you actually need to have some scripting experience. If you have no scripting experience, it's no good typing codes that you don't understand how it works. 
otherwise you'll never actually know what's happening and then you can get into a ton of errors and then you'd never know how to fix them. So this is looking pretty good, but as you can see this is an orange and then this is a yellow. So now let's head into the game and see if it works. Let's then try something after that. Okay, so here we are. Then if we delete the spawn, and there it is, and now let's give it a couple of seconds, and it is working. So it is changing the colour every time. Now let's say we wanted to try something more advanced. Okay, let's see if this works. When the player joins the game, attach... Oops. When the player joins the game, attach the part to their humanoid root part, but make sure they can walk around. Make sure it's also bigger than the humanoid it's, or the humanoid root part, let's just say. So now let's wait a couple of seconds. Okay, so as you can see, when the player joins, it changes the sight and then it sets the C frame. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, and then let's click play. So when we generate a line like that, it's called something, it's called a prompt. And prompts are how we tell the AI to generate the code. Now, the more precise your prompt, the better results you'll get. As you can see, that is not what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to be attached to me. But of course, the AI somehow didn't understand that, and it decided to just hard code the C frame. So, for example, if we had something like this, as you can see, it's not going to get the optimal result. So, sometimes you need to provide it with absolute details. Think of it as someone who's smart but needs a lot of guidance. So you need to give them very clear instructions. Now, to receive more accurate and relevant suggestions, it's good and crucial to follow good coding practices. Break down your code into small functions and use descriptive names for parameters, functions and scripts. And consistently include well-written comments throughout your coding process. So if we were for, say, example, the part is now anchored, and then let's just say here, make the part gradually grow over time forever. Okay, and then let's give it some time. Sometimes, there we go. And then let's also say, um, make the part a neon material. Okay, and then we're going to wait for it, and then we're going to press tab, and then let's play with it and see how it goes. Now you may notice an issue pops up here. So here is the part it's generating, but wait a second, where's the neon? Like I said before, you need some prior knowledge on coding for this to work. So if you were a scripter, you would realise that this loop would keep running this code infinitely, and so we would never reach this part of the code. So how about we move this up before here, and then hopefully it should work. So as you can see, right now it's not that accessible to developers who haven't tried too much. Maybe for small codes it would be helpful, but for complicated codes you're not going to get very far. So for example, you can tell it to create an entire system, it's simply not capable of doing that. Right now the main intention of a uh, code assist is to help developers develop quickly. So keep in mind that Code Assist is not perfect. Code Assist is designed to be a helpful tool, but it cannot replace the creativity, domain knowledge, and problem solving skills of an experienced developer. As Code Assist is still in its beta stage, the developers on Roblox will continue to improve the model and user experiences based on user feedback and needs. So make sure to try and provide your thoughts to help them make this tool even better. So that's all for today's video on Roblox Generative Scripting, also known as Code Assist. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and that it has piqued your interest in trying out this new powerful tool. Now please, if you have any issues with this, head over to our forms, which is forms.thecookie.dev. Thank you for tuning in, that's all from me, and bye bye.